Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Arlington Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, August 4th, 2014. It is 7.15 p.m., and I do call this meeting to order. Just a reminder, we are being televised tonight by ACMI, so um, please smile widely at the microphone. Um, I do want to thank everyone for being here tonight. I know uh, we had some difficulties last Monday, and I am very appreciative that you all um, bear with us, and um, we're happy to be here. I would like to begin by having a moment of silence for um, Senator uh, Robert Havern. He was on the Board of Selectmen for many years, as well as a member of the House of Representatives, and finally in the State Senate. Um, our thoughts are certainly with Mrs. Havern, uh, Tim, Ned, and the rest of his family. And um, you know, he was just a, a great guy who I have some fond memories of. So please join me. Thank you, everyone. Um, to begin, we have a consent agenda. Um, minutes of meetings, July 28, 2014. <coughs> June 23rd, 2014, and July 1st, 2014. We have an approval for a date change from July 26th to September 6th for the inaugural Moonlight Beach Party and a one-day beer and wine license. We have a reappointment to the Human Rights Commission. We have a reappointment to the Redevelopment Board, a request for a contractor drain layer license, another and two more requests for contractor drain layer licenses, as well as an approval for a, a, the Region Theater for the New England Reunion Concert, a beer and wine license. Is anyone here to speak on these agenda items? Move uh, approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, before taking a vote, I do want to reiterate the importance of getting all applications in on time. It makes everyone's lives um, in our office as well as other departments throughout town uh, much easier. And we do our best to help everyone out if they're a day or so late, but please pay attention to the dates and times. Um, we have a motion in a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Mr. Chairman, yes, Mr. I say aye to everything, but I have to abstain from the meeting of July 28th. I was in Calgary and wasn't here last week. So yes to all of the above, but July 28th minutes. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. All set, Marion? Thank you. We have appointments um, to Constable Tina Helton. Is, please, come forward. Hello, Tim. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in this position? Um, well, I think it's an interesting position. Um, I'd like to uh, get involved in the community. I've lived here for 11 years, and um, this is something I, I believe I can do. And um, I, I don't know. A little bit something about myself. I am... Um, Italian and American Indian, and I, like I said, I've lived here for 11 years. I previously lived in Newton. Um, I work in Newton. Um, Thank you. Do we have yeah. any questions from the board? Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Moving on. Uh, request change of manager wine and malt license Zocalo Ricardo Ramos hello good evening hey how are you Ricardo? so this is a um, we're just changing from your former manager's name to your name on the license correct um, so we're just changing the uh, the current manager right now under my name to to my name actually and then um, we're planning to Right now, we don't have a license to open on Sundays, and we'd love to extend that to seven days, where we'd like to serve brunch first, you know, Saturday. I mean, Sundays. That's about it, pretty much. Okay. But the thing before us is just a change of name, or moving the name. I beg your pardon? The thing we're voting on today is just a change of name, for now. I, yeah. 
I believe it was that and the change of hours, but I'm not so he, sure about it. So. Yeah, sorry, he is checked off in the application. If you look, six to seven days. Got it. Also, uh, but we have um, the change of manager as the title on okay, it. Okay, good. Thank you for. Uh, yep. Uh, move approval, subject to conditions. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank or you. Nothing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Now we have citizens open forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Is anybody here for Citizens Open Forum? Yes. Hi, thank you. I'm a resident of East Arlington, and next Monday I will be hosting an international global torch relay for peace that will be coming through Arlington. And they've been greeted by mayors and city councilmen and many, many communities around the country. I would love to find a representative of Arlington to have a brief ceremony on the steps of Town Hall next Monday in the late afternoon. I brought a cover letter, more information, and my contact information. I don't know if this is the kind of thing you need to vote on. I'm just asking one individual person if they'd like to show up. I also should say I've arranged for um, co coverage by Arlington Community Media. I am a producer for ACME. Mm -hmm. Unless the council person is camera shy, we can, <laughs> we, we don't have to do that part of it. But there is the opportunity. <laughs> That was such a gift, I can't say anything. <laughs> you tell me I'll be on, I'll be there. <laughs> there we go, and we can handle Can I give a one. speech of 15 minutes? <laughs> Definitely. I promise not to edit it. Uh -huh. yeah. Mr. Chaplin, do you have? If, um, if the resident would like to give me the information, I can certainly work with the board or some other town officials to see if uh, a representative can be there at the event. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, definitely for the yeah. chair. How many do you have? Thank you. I'll take one if yeah. you have an Thank extra. You. Thank, you so, Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Great. And, and Mr. Chaplain will be in touch uh, this week, and we'll try to set something up. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thanks Thank you. For, thanks for doing this. Is anyone else here for a Citizens Open Forum? Yes, please. Hi, uh, Scott Sammonfeld, uh, Summer Street in Arlington. Um, I'm here uh, to speak briefly in support of trying to do something to support the Silver Maple Forest effort, uh, trying to save it. Um, this has been a 10 year struggle. Um, all of our reps, um, the city of Cambridge now, uh, through an open meeting that I attended uh, last week, um, have come to uh, see that this is at least something that needs to be dealt with um, in a more reasonable way. Uh, a lot of the assumptions that went into this project are flawed and the implications for the floodplain, especially here in Arlington, are very clear. Um, and it's one of those things where sustainability is right in our face. What are we going to do about it? So I just wanted to, you know, make, make clear that there are a lot of us in town who are following this and are concerned about the, the way development's being done, uh, the baseline assumptions um, that were based on calculations about the floodplain from 1990 that don't reflect any of our knowledge of climate change. We're, you know, we have an opportunity to try to be part of a solution or another cut in the direction of um, catastrophe for the planet. So that's, uh, that's what I'm here to talk, to, to say. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for Citizens Open Forum? Yes, please come forward. Do we, can we get, do you want to share instead? 
<laughs> I'm David Lanscove, um, 32 Teresa Circle, and I too am here to speak relative to the Silver Maple Forest, um, more precisely the, I uh, wanted you to be aware of the Belmont Board of Selectmen agreed to set a standard for floodwater management but they agreed to look at it. But in other, words, in other words, to delay approval so they could look at it. And it was, that was after a presentation by Anne Marie Lambert. Um, it pointed out the, uh, the, the precise, and I can, I can, I tried to give, give you the uh, slides of this unsuccessfully, <laughs> but I'll, I will try again if you want them. Um, the NRCC standard for 2011 is the current weather floodplain analysis that you want to use, and the one that they did use is 50 years old. I mean, the, the one that was based previously. So Belmont agreed we want to we want to look at the look at this. Of course, that's a delaying tactic, but you know ev everything to help the civil maple forest is good in my book. Hmm. Well, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, Mr. Yes, yeah. Mr. I, I definitely like to see the slides. Um, I know uh, you can send an email to uh, Marianne in the office, and also my email address and all of our email addresses are on the town website under selectmen. And I would definitely like to see the additional material you mentioned earlier. Okay, be glad to. Thank you. Mr. Well, and I wondered, since there is an agenda item on this, should we, should we take that out of order at this point just to, it, it's, our town manager has been invited to discuss this, so I, I don't mean to put anybody on the spot, but where they used well, to. May, yeah, maybe we'll see that. if um, anyone else is here for any other issues on their citizens open forum, and then we can okay. um, push it up before traffic rules and orders. Yes, sir. You're the boss. I was I tried to send it to you, but it bounced, so I obviously didn't have the right one. Is anyone else here for Citizens Open Forum? Please come forward. Thanks. Hi. My name is Michelle Phelan, and I live um, in East Arlington on Thorndike Street. And um, I'm just um, speaking just briefly on behalf of an issue that's going to come up later under correspondence received. Um, it's the item labeled daytime parking need for Patricia Peter, 135 Thorndike Street. Um, it was encouraged to come during open forum because I might have a couple of minutes to just speak briefly. Um, there's a two hour parking limit on the street on Thorndike Street, which is one of the st first streets you get to when you, when you reach Arlington if you're walking from the bike path. And uh, I own the home there. I've been there for 15 years. And when I first moved there, I came to the Board of Selectmen. I asked for on-street overnight parking because there were, there's no, there's no driveway um, at my house. The, the lot's a very irregular shape and it's kind of too small for a driveway. And I was given on-street overnight parking and, and that's what I've done for the past 15 years. But lately, I think the police have been um, ticketing the street pretty regularly. There have been a lot of complaints about parking on the street. And um, because my um, uh, tenant leaves her car there during the day and um, comes home at night, she's at a little bit of a inconvenience about what to do. Um, that actually falls into my own category too. I don't, I work from home during the day so I have a similar issue. And I, I just want to know if there's a way that I can work with the town to come to a, a fair um, resolution. And I'm happy to supply any information or materials that might be needed to help make a decision. But I, I just wanted to put my issue out there. So thank you for listening. Thank you very much. And um, uh, 
full disclosure, I did speak with Michelle last week and mentioned the Common Citizens Open Forum and said that we um, will look into it further and see, see what we can do after having a broader discussion with some subcommittees. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Is anyone else here for Citizens Open Forum? Seeing none. Um, <clears throat> You know, I, did, I know that we did just say we'll move the um, Silver Maple Forest discussion um, up to now, but I think I would like to address the Jason Street as well as the Green Roots, <coughs> Roots Initiative, and then we will take up the uh, Silver Maple Forest discussion. So. I, the th members of uh, TAC were here last week and they're sorry they couldn't make it tonight. Um, I will be uh, giving a, speaking briefly on their behalf um, as I was a bit involved with this project um, since its origin. Um, to begin, I definitely want to thank all of the Transportation Advisory Committee for their work on this and uh, especially the working group which was made up of Rich Turcott. Jeff Matixis, Howard Muse, Ed Starr, and um, we also had a great deal of help from Officer Rateau, uh, Wayne Chenard, and Adam Kurowski um, on making this uh, project work. Um, it, the amount of work that went into producing these recommendations was pretty extensive. Um, back in 2012, we had a fir our first community meeting um, to discuss Jason Street and we heard from the residents and what they were seeing and what they wanted changed. Um, then there were, um, there was quite a bit of intensive work done um, by the Transportation Advisory Committee um, in, including traffic volume counts, um, recording vehicle speeds, they even got in their cars and did time, uh, travel time comparisons. So, um, you know, and they were joined by members of the community. So it, it was a completely open process and one that I am uh, thoroughly impressed in. And, and, and conducted that with survey. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. that was not done by TAC, actually. Oh, that wasn't TAC? No, uh, there was a bit of confusion on that, um, <laughs> believe it or not. And I think um, many of the residents were, um, uh, well, either way. I just understood that. I shouldn't lose the chance. Um, so, and what we're going to discuss tonight are the, rec are the phase one recommendations for Jason Street. Um, at TAC will be coming back to us with some more, you know, I want to say large scale, you know, probably traffic calming measures that work for the community. Um, but tonight they have recommended um, curb extensions um, on Jason Street and Brantwood Road. Um, all of the crosswalks to be painted as soon as possible. Um, install a seasonal pedestrian warning bollard at Monotomy Rocks Park. Um, add advanced crosswalk warning signs on Jason Street. Um, so in both directions at Woodland Street, in both directions at Monotomy Rocks Park crosswalk, and northbound on Jason between Gray and Irving. Um, they recommend replacing faded and damaged signage as needed. Um, they want to provide a temporary radar speed trailer on Jason Street northbound uh, between Spring and Hillsdale. Um, this is something that um, you know will have to be coordinated with the police department, I believe, as with that is a limited resource and it's pretty sought after throughout town, but. Um, one that will certainly go to good use on Jason Street. Um, they recommend installing a new yield sign on Hillsdale on the approach to Jason Street near um, Intersection Traffic Island. Um, install a new intersection warning sign. And they are also um, going to work to draft a letter for the board's consideration that we can send to the Mass DOT to provide additional assignment, um, signage and pavement markings to improve the awareness of uh, the weave conditions on the Concord Turnpike. And um, the, the, these are recommendations that I full heartedly support. Um, it, this process was, um, was really eye opening for me as I, you know, going and seeing all, you know, the nitty gritty work that TAC does. And um, 
from start to finish. This is, um, you know, I think it's been a great balance of what, <coughs> what taxis fit to address the issues as well as what the residents want in the neighborhood. And um, so I hope you all join me in voting to support it. Move we'll approval on all of, although did you do that last Monday night already? No, we did not. Move we'll approval with reference to the town manager. Second. Um, oh, no, no, I can Diane, wait. please. Um, did, did you want to hear from the manager first? He may actually speak to what I'm going to ask about. I simply wanted to respectfully request uh, that the board make their vote subject to the successful development of a budget and timeline by DPW that could then be forwarded back to the board for final endorsement. Just so tonight we're not promising something that we think is going to happen overnight but may have um, a schedule based on budgetary ability. Yes, and um, I think that in our discussions with uh, TAC and in certain meetings that, it, that we were going to endorse them to get in the timeline and just be done as soon as possible. Um, I'm just going to sort of parlay or hijack um, this p particular agenda item. Um, I know we discussed a couple of months back when Mr. Rademacher, the DPW director, was here that we were going to be introducing a lot more thermoplastic treatments to our crosswalks um, where applicable in high volume areas and things like that. Um, I know where I live, which is right by the Audison School, I'm on Howard Street, and this is Quincy. They um, did all the sidewalks um, on Quincy, up on uh, Gray Street by Fountain, et cetera. But I didn't see any thermoplastic. It's the regular paint again. So I was just wondering where we have some of these crosswalks to be repainted are also school bus crosswalks. Um, so I was wondering if I could just take advantage of this agenda <coughs> item and ask the manager if he could look into um, if there was an issue that we didn't get this, the treatment or, or something else, or maybe we had to delay it for another year or something. But I had a memory that M Mr. Rademacher said we would be applying that in high volume um, traffic areas. And this certainly, some of these sites certainly seem applicable as well as the audits. And I'm not saying go back and reapply it, but that's just gonna wear out next year again. So I was just curious where we are. Yeah. So the general plan uh, is uh, Mr. Rademacher is tr using an epoxy uh, product this year that is supposed to have the same uh, visual uh, or you know ability to see it and lifespan of the thermoplastic but is less expensive uh, so it's an upgrade from the paint but cheaper than the thermoplastic. Oh hey if that works that's fine. And the goal is to go the entire length of the avenue uh, that contract should be let any day now with that new epoxy. Some of the uh, crosswalks on Mass Ave that have been done recently are that new epoxy finish and all of this, the cross streets that come out onto Mass Ave are going to be done with paint uh, but when we look at this, we can certainly um, see what we can do with the epoxy film. Or maybe, in, and or maybe for next year. Yeah. If it's successful, I know I also felt it. It doesn't have the same texture, not that it has yeah. to. But if it is, maybe we could, maybe the next priority two or priority three of the crosswalks <clears throat> around the schools. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Dunn. I, I just wanted to comment on just a, a, so I'm really happy with the work that TAC has been doing on this. And I think that they've done a really good job of um, doing community input. I think that the, the survey that M Mr. Greeley mentioned was, so it wasn't done by TAC. And I think that that had some both fortunate and unfortunate side effects. And so the, the unfortunate side effects were that um, it wasn't the best vehicle to talk about future things. So there are these phase two ideas that aren't ready for us, aren't ready to be considered, but they were mentioned in the survey. And I don't know about the rest of you, but I got a number of phone calls and emails about that. And so to me, that was the good news part about it. You know, more people saw this, more people paid attention to it. Uh, it increased, it, it has increased community uh, conversation about it. And so I guess um, I, wanted to, I wanted to call out that survey in specific, but I also wanted to talk about the process. And I wanted to talk about how glad I was to get all the neighborhood input. And uh, I'm glad that they're, you know, feeding into what these things are. All that said, I think that these recommendations here for the phase one, are, um, they all make sense to me. I'm delighted to support them. Thank you. Um, any discussion from the crowd? Yes, please, come forward. My name is Carol Forbes. I live on Jason Street. And um, I was one of the neighbors who was concerned about re receiving the survey. Um, I do want to acknowledge all the hard work people did. It must have taken hours to go driving down various streets, timing things, counting cars. So I really appreciate that. 
Um, I, in addition to some of the more uh, non-controversial um, suggestions, uh, I spoke with a selectman in another town who suggested bog lines are something that is not too expensive and can be helpful. They're white lines on the edges of the curb on the street. And I just wanted to toss that out there to t the folks on TAC. And then um, I would be um, someone who would be uh, affected by the rotary circle that was highlighted um, on that survey. Um, and I have a lot of questions about that. I don't know if this is the time to raise them or at a TAC uh, meeting, but. Yeah, we, we are, we're not going to discuss any okay. um, of the phase two recommendations because there really aren't any real recommendations to discuss at this point. But we, um, I, myself and my colleagues as well as TAC are very aware of the concerns of, you know, many of the residents regarding a traffic circle. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any further comments? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you, for nothing vote. Um, moving on, for approval, a letter of support for the Green Roots Initiative. Um, Mr. Tonkin and Mr. Goff. Good evening. Um, I think you have before you a letter that we, we drafted. Uh, for the Green Streets Initiative. This is something that was uh, brought to uh, the Arlington Bicycle Advisory Committee by one of our members, Phil Goth, who's going to speak more in detail about it. But we feel that it's um, an initiative that's really uh, would be very beneficial for, for the town in terms of uh, it would help the, intercon uh, the interconnection of all the different bike routes around here, which um, I think have a great potential of bringing more um, cyclists um, as tourists to, to Arlington which, uh, and for commuting, which will help uh, economic development and tourism development in town. And I think I'm going to hand this over to Phil to uh, give you a little bit more about it. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Phil Goff, I'm at 94 Grafton Street in East Arlington. Happy to see all those cones and barrels and construction equipment out there. <laughs> I'm Mass Ave, just had to throw that out there since I'm here. Um, anyways, I am a member not just of uh, ABAC, the Bike Advisory Committee, but also a member of the, this Green Roots Initiative. Uh, it's a coalition of groups that includes some municipal planners and MAPC and a few other agencies, some neighborhood advocates and some regional pedestrian bike trail advocates as well. And we have formed maybe six or eight months ago uh, in order to form a coalition to push the state um, to, to look at funding at a more coordinated approach to the greenways and trails, um, rail trails, greenway trails, uh, and all else that has already been planned. These are priorly planned routes by DCR and by DOT. Uh, what it lacks is some political will and some push and some funding issues. So this coalition has gotten together uh, in order to help create that political will and get the funding together. Um, we, uh, as a coalition, are going town to town, basically. Uh, seeking uh, support from boards of selectmen, from bike advisory committees, walk advisory committees, who we, whoever we can get our hands on, uh, advocacy groups as well. That's what uh, we here are asking uh, for the board's support uh, for something like this. Uh, it's, a letter of, it's a letter of support. It doesn't tie the town to anything. It doesn't tie the town to any funding. Uh, it doesn't tie the town to create any additional plans. It's basically pushing the state DCR mostly with DOT, Secretary Davies' office to start moving forward with some of these green routes um, to bring the kind of uh, improvements that we are lucky here in Arlington to have. Miniman Path, the Alewife Brook um, Greenway, um, the Mystic River Parkway, and some of our other um, on-street connections to bring those same kind of facilities to neighboring towns, simply because the Minuteman and other facilities like it, it works well here to connect to Lexington, to Bedford, in one direction, to the west, but you get on the Alewife Brook Greenway, you go on the Minuteman towards Cambridge. Getting into downtown Boston is not so easy on a trail. Um, getting to the Charles River is not so easy on a trail or a Greenway kind of project to Medford. I mean, you name it, there's all kinds of places 
uh, and our coalition really is trying to sort of uh, interlink all these plan trails, uh, get them going soon. Um, so all the uh, members of, sort of greater Boston have that ability. If you look at the network, again, that's already been planned uh, with the implementation of all this, I know it's gonna take a number of decades. It basically brings about 70% of greater Boston's population within a half mile of a rail trail, of a river greenway, of uh, some sort of uh, trail connection. And of course, there's some critical on, on street connections like we here in Arlington with the Minuteman Path um, Crossing Project are sort of doing our part to help connect some of those important greenways through our town. So um, again, that doesn't tie the town to anything. I wanna uh, reiterate that again. Um, and the Bike Advisory Committee and the Green Roots Initiative, in which I am part of both, um, are asking for the board's support for this letter. Thanks so much, and I'm certainly happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Phil. Any questions from the board? Yes, Ms. Bond. Um, just where you referenced it, and it's, it will be part of my new business, although I may take care of it right now, is this group and the funding that it's seeking to just the construction of a greenway or a trailway, or is it also, and the reason I reference this is um, it's literally been me having to call the governor of the Commonwealth, the Greenway Trailway down by Sunnyside. Um, there hasn't been everything promised. Like if you're a pedestrian and you want to um, get on the Greenway and you live any of the neighborhoods from Arizona Terrace all the way up to Broadway, unless you, you know, you're really good at Olympics and vaulting up, there's no, one of the neighbors had built a little um, sort of ramp that um, there's a recycling bin too doesn't that work for you <laughs> I'm just kidding no. that's a joke okay. no, that is no, a joke. no no you know what it is this has been a long standing issue with the yeah, neighbors no, in I terms know. of they want to use it yeah no and, I agree it, and it's the state, what I'm saying is and the yeah. state promised when they went out and said we're going to come in there this isn't just going to be for one use it's going to be for you know people who want to walk with your strollers you want to jog you want to bike you want to you know skateboard whatever um, but one of the things so would this group be the kind of group that would be also looking to get funding for that, or is it no, just getting a greenway in there? I'm, and I'm asking it seriously. I'm yeah, not, no, it's, it's a great serious. question, and I agree that uh, there are some, some flaws to that plan and, and the inability for people on Sunnyside to easily access that path was certainly a mistake in DCR's um, plan for the greenway. Um, our initiative and groups of folks who are working on this are not looking at trails at that level of detail that's fine i just yeah. wanted to make sure so I that, that's a short that. answer is no and no and that's yeah. fine i just wanted to get some clarity yep. on that because i'm like I, i'd like rather avoid the route that i'm going through now yeah. um, but thank you for i mean the one that probably would have the most impact on us here in arlington is dcr has had for a number of years plans to connect um minuteman path through alewife uh, around fresh ponds and on an old abandoned uh, railroad line through Watertown to Watertown and then connect to the river through somewhere around our Arsenal Park. There's a plan, it's a very rough plan, but there isn't the money and the political will again to sort of push it through to make it happen anytime soon. And that's the kind of ideal connection. That would be an incredible amenity, I think, for, for people in Arlington. Mm -hmm. That's just one, there's many others, so. Thank you, any further? Move approval. Second. Do you have a comment, Adam? Just to build on what Ms. Mahan said, I, I think to hammer home your point, and you, I saw that you have the language in your statement. F you know, asking for funding for creation is, is a very good, uh, a very important thing to do, but I think making sure that there's maintenance funding in anything the state does, or, or municipal government does, is very important. Because as we see, even, you know, it's, it's the washout from last week, but making sure that these pathways are maintained is what makes them usable yeah. for generation after generation. Yeah. yeah. I think we've, we've heard uh, say that the state is really interested in building and not maintenance. So I think it's something we need to push for is maintenance mm -hmm. is highly important because if things are built and just fall apart, it's worse than not having them built sometimes. Agreed. And we're, we're happy to change, tweak in the wording of the letter. If that's the desire of the board. If sure. you could make it a little more broader so maybe it's an option and maybe that group is just a resource because it's been a, a nightmare down on the Greenway on Sunnyside. And this is things that the state committed to, DCR and Dan Driscoll, and we won't go into that <laughs> whole story. Um, so my thing is, I, I echo what the manager said in terms of maintenance. Um, if it's a cost, we have to continually pick up, and then we can't do it as quickly as people want, and we're impeding whether they want to commute or just you know, walk and exercise. It, it snowballs. So if you can, if you feel comfortable adding a little more broad language. Yeah, 
I mean, we could change the language easily enough and route it through, I guess, town manager okay. or through Joey Glushko. Um, yeah, if you, so we won't take a vote on this tonight. And then if you want to make some edits and we can put it on our August agenda or our next meeting agenda. And um, I think, we, but you won't have to come in again. I think we've already had enough discussion about it. Would you, would you entertain a motion where we give authority to someone like the manager to approve? Or, because, I mean, Frank, like anything along these lines, I don't know about yeah. Mike, uh, the rest, uh, everybody else? I hold him up. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, yeah as long as the manager, because I think right. he's encapsulated in what the uh, Adam, are you okay if we? I'm fine with that. Yeah, okay. I think that's appropriate. Uh, I, I withdraw my original motion. I move approve. I, I move that we uh, ask the town manager to finalize language similar to what we have before us in approving the uh, Green Streets initiative. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. So uh, we will, Adam, are you okay with moving the Silver Maple yeah. Forest yeah. discussion sure. up for right sure. now? So we're going to bounce around on the agenda to item 14 for um, an invitation from the City of Cambridge to discuss the Silver Maple Forest. Mr. Chaplain. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so as Mr. Salmonfeld alluded to in his comments earlier, uh, la I, I believe it was the same meeting you may have been referring to. Last Monday, the Cambridge City Council uh, had a very long policy discussion and wound up voting on a policy order that requested that the Cambridge City Manager pull together a meeting of the Arlington Town Manager, Belmont Town Administrator, and I believe the order also called for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to, uh, to be part of this discussion to talk about any ways possible of preserving and protecting the Silver Maple Forest. Uh, so I then received a call from both the Cambridge City Manager and Belmont Town Administrator after that meeting uh, to gauge interest in having such a meeting. Uh, we committed to have uh, that meeting with the three uh, representatives of the community. I don't have any confirmation that anybody from the Commonwealth will be there uh, this Thursday morning at 8 a.m. in Cambridge. Uh, so in going into that meeting uh, and given the public discussion and the community discussion about it, I wanted to make sure that uh, I was on the same page with the board before going into that meeting. Uh, so in the memo I've provided to the board, uh, I'm basically asking the board endorse the following course of action. Uh, that the Town of Arlington engage through its town manager in discussions regarding possible options for the preservation of the Silver Maple Forest, but at this time not provide any financial commitment to acquiring or protecting the land. Uh, and the rationale behind uh, at this point not making the financial commitment is based upon the fact that the land is in, in its entirety in both Belmont and Cambridge and not within Arlington's borders. Uh, and should Arlington uh, identify financial resources for preservation of wetlands uh, and area for flood storage, I would think Arlington's first priority would be protecting the Mugar property with a financial commitment as opposed to the Silver Maple Forest. That said, I don't think that should um, be taken as Arlington taking a position supporting development, but rather uh, taking an approach of wanting to see what can be due for preservation without making any false or uh, commitments we don't want to back up with finances. Thank you, Mr. Chaplain. Uh, discussion from the board. <coughs> Ms. Um, I agree with what the town manager has outlined as a first step. I know all of us here on the board, myself, 15, 20 years, I've been going to meetings around the Mugar, around the Uplands, around the Civil Maple Forest, um, meeting with a lot of people in Cambridge, Carolyn Meath, Steve Kaiser, and then George Late, Elsie Fiore from Arlington. Been to a lot of, um, you know, informational gatherings that we've had down there, not just cleanups. And I think it's really vital in terms of the development down there and more importantly, the overdevelopment um, of that sort of nexus, that triangle. And I think, I think most everyone would agree that um, towns of Arlington and Belmont and the city of Cambridge, um, sometimes to a lesser extent, um, when we've come forth with um, issues that come up intermittently with the Mugar property, um, we sort of coalesced, um, and I see this same sort of group coalescing around the Civil Maple Forest and each board of selectmen from each town as well as the city of Cambridge. Sometimes somebody's in the driver's seat and the rest of us sit in the back. So I think the um, wording and the verbiage that what the manager has put forth as a first step sort of, we've been in this ride before <laughs> and some, when it's Mugar we're usually in the front with um, Belmont and Cambridge always coming and supporting us um, and I think now we're just going down the same journey 
but um, recognizing that each one of us has to play the roles. Um, but I certainly do support, and we've always appreciated the town of Belmont, um, as well as a lot of citizen activists um, from the city of Cambridge. And Owen O'Reid, their public works director, he's been very reasonable to work with, but I also understand, you know, he's the Cambridge public works director. Um, um, so uh, I think this is a similar thing. I think we've, t you know, it's been Muga before, now it's the civil, Silver Maple Forest, and we need to stay on top of it, we need to be involved. And um, I want to applaud the manager for, and anyone else who does go, I, I unfortunately cannot, um, for making sure that we're there and we have a voice. So I would move approval to um, the recommendations put forth by the initial recommendations put forth by the town manager. Second. Any further discussion? Mr. Dunn. Just want to um, mention that, it, so we, the, as a board, we've taken a position on the Silver Maple Forest a couple times, and, and I think at least, uh, at, I think once while I was here, and then others before I was here, including supporting state legislation to, um, f to fund the purchase of it, to just take it off the table entirely. And I just want to say that I think that this is, um, this vote that we're about to take is consistent with what we've done before, and I actually think that we could even go a little bit farther if we needed to. Like, I mean, I think that, that I suspect that we could come up with stronger language if we needed to that we would all be able to agree with. Um, so, and I would just say personally, the thing that I am most concerned about with this is the flood uh, aspect of it. Uh, I really, uh, um, you know, we we have flooding problems already, and there's definitely a lot of a lot of reason to worry about the the proposal that's there. So. Um, I support this, and I guess I'm, and I say that in particular, I guess, because I know that the town manager is listening, and he'll go to the meeting, and he'll, and I, I in my mind, you can, you can be a little bit more emphatic uh, when you sit down at that table. I appreciate that, and I think the approach I tried to lay out was one that, um, you know, certainly could have had more emphasis, but also had a, a, a balance of reality too, uh, of what the realistic possibilities that both Arlington or Belmont or Cambridge could do to stop, but making sure that we're having the discussion. I thought for sure that your top issue would have been the traffic at L Life. But, uh, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I, um, no, I'd, I'd also like to thank Adam for this, and I think um, this is a, a pretty good strategy for us. It, it does give us leeway, but it, let, it, you know, going into the discussion, it's important that there is a you know strategy in place that we've all considered and and can support and kind of guide our town manager through. The discussion that takes place, and I'm I'm really interested to hear what you come back with, Adam. Of course, thank you. Um, any further discussion on this agenda item? Seeing none, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Four nothing vote. Thank you. Back to uh, agenda item number seven for approval. Arlington International Fim Film Festival Banners, um, April Rankin, Alberto Guzman. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Selectman and Town Manager, for hearing our request. Uh, Alberto Guzman, the founder of the festival, April Rank, the executive director. Um, Alberto, do you want to give them okay. postcards? Um, we're here for the third year. Uh, requesting uh, approval for banners to be placed uh, in downtown Arlington uh, around September the 10th uh, through the end of the festival. And I do want to say special thanks to ATED for sponsoring us uh, in this request. So um, basically that, that, that's what we're asking for. Thank you. Do we have uh, any questions from the board? Mr. Dunn. Marianne, do you, I know some, often Marie keeps track of banners and timing and stuff like that. Are you, do, do you know what the calendar of the banners are and stuff like that? And this matches, are you aware or no? Especially in terms of town day and things town like that. Town day is that Friday. Right, um, we don't use the pole banners for a town day. Okay. Um, we do one on, on the front. We're one of the ones that can be on the front of the town hall. So um, it's been discussed, but at this point in time for town day, we don't have a problem this year. Right. So. Uh, move approval. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? No, I just had one thing. Uh, am I right though on the 15th, there's something here in Town Hall? The 15th of October? Yes. You mean our festival? Yes. We're actually doing an October 9th fundraiser that's being uh, sponsored by 2020 Diversity Task Group. Okay. That, that's, uh, I, if, I hope that's what you're talking about. 
No. No. Opening. Oh, opening night of our festival is October the 15th. Right, but this says Regent Theater. Correct. Yes. Not here in Town Hall and not out there in the garden. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Uh, yes, for four years we've we've had um, our at festival the at the Regent. Right, I right. understand. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I don't mean to confuse you. Oh, that's okay. Uh, what you're looking at is... Uh, someone, someone wanted to get married on that date and was told the International Film Festival mm -hmm. was renting the garden in Town Hall. Oh, oh no. no, 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 no. The only event that... <laughs> <laughs> Unless my husband is asking me to marry him again, and I don't know you about that. You do it, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the only thing that um, that AIFF is doing with Town Hall or at Town Hall this year is on October 9, and we're very grateful to 2020 Diversity for sponsoring a fundraiser. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Certainly support thank us. You. So, um, any further discussion from anyone in the crowd? Seeing none, we had a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? For nothing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Moving on, uh, number eight, for approval, um, Park Avenue, Downing Square uh, parking signs. This uh, came from Officer Rateau, um, and it is to um, allow for three hour spots in front of the Ink Jam Studio, as well as two 15-minute spots on Lowell Street. And um, I did speak with Officer Rateau on these items, and he um, thinks that they will, and I agree with him, that they will go a long way to support the businesses in those areas. And um, it's, a, um, it's a change that I think will help everyone out. So um, move approval for the two 15-minute parking and the remaining three-hour parking signs. Yes, Mr. Dunn. And also, um, Mrs. Pond, may also could we add the um, permit parking on the Park Avenue side? Oh yes, thank and you. And we should figure out what. And I don't think I don't. Did, is there a recommendation in there about what duration those should be? Um, I don't think there is. I think it's inherent that it's three hours. I'm but good. It was going to be let's do it that. Uh, three hours. And Corey is. Um, if we have we had a kind of a long discussion on it, and he is. Um, working to update the traffic rules and orders and he came across a vote from before I was on the board that actually is completely aligned with what he's asking for here so it's going to be a much easier um, fix than we thought it would be yep. um, so that is um, that is the purpose second so anyone here to discuss these items seeing none any further discussion from the board no and I think the vote was the three-hour vote we took for the municipal parking lot, and, and um, I think that's what he's maybe trying to make everything more in line with. So, and that that was a success. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. For nothing. Thank you. Moving on. Review and. Say opposed. I'm sorry. I was in favor. Yeah. Oh, okay. if I, I would... oh, you said opposed, and nobody said anything. Yeah. No one said anything. Sorry. Sorry. But yeah. For nothing vote. Okay. Um, moving on, review and comment on draft CPA ballot question. Mr. Heim, Attorney Heim, sorry. Good evening, members of the board. Uh, I think my memo is fairly self-explanatory, but uh, as I've noted in it, just for a quick summary, uh, under Chapter 44B3F, the town council is to prepare a ballot question um, to go to the voters in uh, November with respect to the uh, adoption of the CPA, which was approved to go to the ballot by uh, this past town meeting. The, uh, I apologize, it doesn't appear that the highlighted sections of the draft ballot questions that are basically uh, uh, malleable under the law uh, came through very clearly, but the long and short of it is, is that it's the narrative descriptions of the purposes that the town seeks uh, for uh, establishing the CPA as a dedicated funding source that can be altered and changed and emphasized uh, a little bit differently from municipality to municipality. And you can also um, prioritize the uh, exemptions from the surcharge uh, in a different way. You could order them differently is basically the two pieces of it that in my opinion are really uh, malleable. And I just wanted to make sure that this uh, ballot question accurately reflected the uh, board's feelings on um, what the purpose of the CPA really is for Arlington for the voters to consider whether or not they want this surcharge. 
Thank you. Discussion from the board. Yes, Ms. Ryan. Um, just format procedural, um, and I'm going by memory, and I think I'm right. We'll follow the same format in the sense that it'll be the general ballot question, the yes, the no, and then the explanation underneath, or no, is it the ballot question, the explanation, and then the yes or no under that. So what, you don't have to answer that right now, but whatever we've done in the past for questions like this, just because it's not here in front of me, I just don't want anyone to say that, yep. you know, 99 times you did it this way. So it, it'll be, this has to be submitted to the, uh, to the state, mm -hmm. and I believe that they'll structure it the same way. As okay, they have structured that's similar ballot questions. the only thing I didn't see, just format. Thank you. Yeah. Kind of similar question. Do you know whether we get to number it? Like, do we, is it before or after the state questions? Do mm. we know that too? You know, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, I can inquire with the state and get back to I, I Actually, I got that one. That one was asked me and I didn't know. So if you'd sure. be interested to. I can look at that. I mean, I believe that the state actually also prints the ballots. So. I think so. Or I, they, I, they, I, they arrange the ballot at least yeah. uh, in, terms of, in terms of the structure of it. So I don't know that we have discretion on that matter. I don't either. Uh, but but I, I I can inquire and get back to you on that. Basically, one of the things I'm really curious about is what number is it going to be. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion from the board? Seeing the yes, Mr. Dunn. I was going to move receipt. Thank you. Do we have any comments from the crowd? Seeing none. Second. Does he need receipt or approval? No. Receipt. 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 Thank we, you. we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. Four nothing. Thank you. And coming back to you, Attorney Heim, with a vote for the date for the 2015 annual town election. So um, the board inquired with respect to what parameters need to be considered for the town election. Again, I think that my memo on this matter is, uh, speaks for itself. Um, what I've done is tried to highlight the uh, timing of the various different options, given the fact that we would norm the dates that we would normally have for the town election are uh, basically religious holidays. There's the um, um, the, tr uh, the Greek uh, Easter calendar to consider, the uh, non-Greek Christian calendar to consider, as well as Passover, which uh, limits the uh, ideal dates to hold the town election on a Saturday. Um, this issue came up previously in 2012. Um, and if you look at the various uh, timelines that I've prepared for you, you can see the advantages and disadvantages of the various Saturday dates. The board does have the option, as it ultimately elected to, to do in 2012, to hold it on a weekday. Um, I believe in 2012 it was on a Tuesday. Um, but uh, if the board has any specific questions in terms of how this might, uh, how these various dates might impact uh, the timelines, I'd be happy to answer them. I, I should know that the town moderator has uh, special concerns that he wanted me to share with the board about having the election too late or too close to town meeting itself uh, because he'd love, ideally like to have town meeting members have time to really look at the materials, consider them, and try to have an informed town meeting start uh, off efficiently. Thank you. Mr. Greeley. Yeah, um, <coughs> excuse me. 26 years ago when I was first elected, it was March 4th, and that was my logo, March 4th to victory. Uh, and we've changed it since then to early April. So I would like to move that we keep it on Saturday, I think just because people have become used to that, and move it just up one week to March 28th. Um, so I make that motion and want to hear from my colleagues. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? Yes. Uh, I, um, so I, 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 March 28th was my f leading contender for a while, and I actually thought that the problem with Saturday, April 11th was Passover, um, but then I figured, but Passover really is largely celebrated this, uh, on like looking at the calendar on April 3rd, um, but I hadn't factored in Greek Easter, and so I thought, I, I thought we were, and so uh, I'm back to March 28th, so I'm, I, I'm with you. Good, thank you. That's and I would definitely agree on that date, um, especially where there really has been a building initiative for um, newly and current town meeting members to hold an informational meeting for constituents in their precincts. Um, I think at least a third of the precincts in town, before it used to just be precinct eight and 10, 
but we have East Arlington, I, I want to say, you know, close to half, definitely at least a third. Um, and I think March 28th gives the current as well as any newly um, elected town meeting members enough time to book a room, because we're all looking for the same weekend, for limited to one weekend with Patriots Day, it could be a nightmare. So I agree also. Thank you. Any discussion from the crowd? Seeing none, we, I also support the 20th. I think that's the most appropriate date. Yes. You know, we, we just want to point out one thing for the office, and we certainly could work it, but it would be based on your schedule on, I think there have been special town meetings attached to every annual town meeting we've had. So um, our submittal to the advocate would be March 5th. It would have to be complete. We are held by bylaw to close a warrant on January 30th. So that means tabling, uh, you know, of uh, warrant article hearings and things almost um, won't exist for you. <laughs> to put it nicely, you know, it's, uh, you know, you're, you've got this much time. Certainly we can do it. Mm -hmm. We can arrange the schedule that way. Um, your flexibility will decrease. Uh, doesn't this give us an extra week for hearings, Marianne? I'm Still town meeting will start at the same time, won't it, in late April? For the, well, yeah, you're right. Can I, We're sorry. moving it up. Speak to that? I, think that, I think part of what Marianne's talking about is um, that it may be difficult, that, that hearings on the articles might proceed concurrently with finalization, as I noted in the memo of the likely unnumbered warrant. So there, are gonna be, there may be some complications with doing multiple things at once in terms of finalizing the actual warrant as it goes out. Yes, the report obviously is still later, uh, and you know, that, that would be okay, but as far as um, um, putting together the order uh, of your warrant, which takes multiple um, committees discussing things in, in you, um, and Marie sitting down with multiple committees, that, that would be, but you're right, the, the actual report itself would be later. So I think what we're doing is making, it can the, be done. making yeah. the, the chairman and the selectman's office job a little bit harder in the sense that, and we also have to do it as individual board members, that we relay to people um, with warrant articles, if it's your night, get one or two backup people, you know, barring any catastrophe. I'm not saying yeah. it would never ever happen, but we're really gonna have to be vigilant on getting the message out that when, when it's your night, you have to be ready to go, and if for some reason, you know, I've had it, one of my kids get, get sick, you have a backup person or two because the selectmen have to discuss it that night and we have to keep the process moving to get the business done, okay? I mean, I don't, I don't want to uh, make this discussion go any longer than necessary, but at some point we really need to discuss um, us holding hearings. We've had a number of incidents in recent years where the proponents don't even show up for the hearing. We vote it down because they don't. They go into town meeting with the same article, and uh, our hearing had no effect. Uh, um, you know, so uh, it, anyhow, I just, I, I, I really wonder after a while what we're doing bothering holding hearings that, you know, people aren't attending or they don't really care about the selectmen's view on it. And it's our votes that are being recommended to town meeting. But the way the current moderator has things, the uh, no action vote, in my opinion, should be voted on first, but he, his ruling is a substitute motion is voted on before I no action vote. Um, so, you know, and you're not allowed to discuss a no action vote. So, any, you know, I wonder whether we might want to go before the rules committee of town meeting at some point and talk about a couple of these issues. But that's not related to this March 28th question, sorry. <laughs> Did I mention I was with my mother at 3 o'clock this morning at Mount Auburn Hospital? Yeah, I'm sorry. Probably tell how tired I am today. Sorry. Say, say linoleum three times. No, no. <laughs> no, no. Well, I, we have a motion to second for March mm -hmm. 28th, so we're going to take a vote on that. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? For nothing. March 28th it is. Be ready. <laughs> um, moving forward, for approval. Authorization to enter into a statewide public safety and public works mutual aid agreements. Mr. Chaplain. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so this is an issue that um, 
Our Director of Emergency Management and Fire Chief, uh, Robert Jefferson, has been working with me uh, and really pushing me on for quite a while. What this agenda item does is it asks, uh, has me asking the board to authorize me to execute both a statewide public works mutual aid agreement and a statewide public safety mutual aid agreement. For the public safety mutual aid agreement, it would really just be an expansion of already existing mutual aid agreements we have in our region to make it statewide. And for public works, it would actually be the first real mutual aid agreement we execute, uh, except it would, <coughs> and it would be statewide. Uh, a growing number of communities are adopting this. Uh, I provided the board with a map, and I, be mm -hmm. I believe a map and a list of participating communities, and a number of our neighbors uh, are on board. And what this really does is uh, gives us protections under the statute, uh, such that uh, there'd be certain liability protections if our staff went across borders to um, perform a service, or if we were receiving help from another community, uh, there'd be protections for that community. And I, I think of you know some examples uh, that we went through uh, when we had the microburst in 2012. We had a lot of help from the state DCR, sent in a number of crews to help us clean up. Um, we didn't ask, or didn't I ask for help from a surrounding community with this public works mutual aid agreement. It would become a, a more natural thing to ask for our neighbors to come help us in such an isolated incident. Uh, and the example that I know Chief Jefferson uses often for a time where we could give public uh, works help with the ice storms in central and western Mass, uh, I think three or four years ago, where there was just a great need for public works help. There was really zero impact here in Arlington, but we perhaps could have sent out crews to help another part of the state in a situation like that. Um, there is details uh, contained within that would give us <coughs> the ability to negotiate uh, for potential compensation, although it recommends there be no compensation for help that goes back and forth. Uh, and it also would allow any community to make requests to FEMA for reimbursement for any help that they provided to another community. So we could do that or someone that helps us uh, could do that. So I, I think it's a right step. It's, um, it's not really uh, full regionalization, but it's regional cooperation. Uh, and I think uh, I, I would appreciate it very much if the board would authorize me to execute the agreements. Move approval. Second. Um, this one. Um, it may be in here, and I just haven't caught it because I'm not that quick of a read. I'm going to assume that um, whatever protections we have for any and all employees um, that are in another community, that that has been taken into account and is somewhere in here, or so. There's a nice, tidy summary of of, of the protections that are uh, extended to and. Um, basically the same protections that our employees would normally have under attachment A okay. um, for chapter 40, section 4J. I believe it's basically the second page with respect to that. And it's the, le it's the basically the last four paragraphs. Just summarize how the uh, law um, maintains uh, the types of defenses and immunities that are uh, particularly uh, uh, law enforcement personnel would have. It also outlines um, a mutual uh, okay. release of liability uh, okay. between towns and indemnification and hold harmless provisions. So it's, it's, been, it's a very thoughtful uh, mm -hmm. uh, law with respect to all of those types of issues and it's contemplated them in advance. It, you're right, it is in there. I, Paul, I just, I didn't oh, get a chance no to look at this till tonight and thank you. Thank you. Uh, further discussion? Seeing none, any discussion from the crowd? Seeing none. Um, I, I, I really support this as well. I think this is a step in the right direction for the town. And, um, you know, when you see some of these storms that hit, I think it's only appropriate that we send help as we would expect other towns to, uh, you know, help us out when we're in those situations. And uh, obviously, thank you to. Uh, Chief Jefferson and Mike Rademacher, as well as Town Manager Chapter Lane, um, on putting this together and bringing it forward. Um, so we had a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? For nothing. Thank you. Moving on, um, number 12, for approval, Lachlan Avenue Island Hedge Replacement. Uh, back to you, Mr. Chapter Lane. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so I put this on the agenda really to shed, uh, just to have some light and public discussion about this issue. Uh, these are the oft-discussed hedges uh, at the island uh, at Lachlan Avenue. I believe last time, um, maybe two meetings ago, there was a group here uh, expressing concerns about traffic in that neighborhood, and I think Mr. Greeley 
uh, said, why can't we just take those hedges down? Uh, you know, they're, they're a constant traffic disruption. So uh, coming out of that meeting, I talked with Mike Rademacher about trimming them, and uh, the DPW staff went down, Jim Dodge went down and said, you know, if we cut these things back anymore, they're just going to be brown, and, and they're going to be uh, an eyesore and not very aesthetically pleasing. So Mike and I discussed, you know, I think it is about time with the ongoing discussions and, the, again, constant citing by TAC as these being a hazard to visibility. Let's put it on an agenda. Let's propose taking them down and uh, commit to replacing them with a more appropriate sized hedge uh, to still keep the island aesthetically pleasing to the neighborhood. So I put it uh, forward for both public consideration and the board consideration. Uh, it's not covered by any tree bylaw or, or any formal process, but again, being sort of a, I would just say a high visibility area, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to have this discussion. Yes, Mr. Gale. Thank you, uh, and thank you, uh, Mr. Chapdelaine. And I was looking at them yesterday, and they are ugly. <laughs> and they would be uglier uh, if we cut them back to improve visibility. But to replace with what? I mean, can we at least for this year uh, uh, take them out and replace with at least lawn? Can we just put seatings uh, in there or something? And is this one of the islands that the Garden Club puts out there, you know, the 60 islands that are taken care of. Yes, I did win first place. Yes, I saw that down at the bottom of Upland Road, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have a motion to have you take care of this one as well? Because you do such a great job on this No, thank you, sir. This is probably twice the size of the island that I take care of. But I'm very, you know, it's in memory of my brother Brian, who first took care of it. But it's right across the street from my house, so I have a big advantage. And most people take care of islands. They're going to carry barrels of water, and I mean, so do I, crossing Mystic Street. Uh, but, uh, but I, I don't know whether this should be also referred to the Garden Club. Whether there is uh, somebody that might be interested. It's a larger island. I mean, that would be, you know, even just the watering of lawn. Uh, I forget. Is there anything right in the middle of it, Adam? Do you know? I don't I think so. I'm so is. focused on those. Is that transformer? Something that makes me think there's That's a rock That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, when, when the board first took the vote many years ago, and I was out there, I wasn't on the board, but I have pretty good recollection of it. The neighbors that come in because there are three or four, they were gray then, I think they're green now, transformers, and have said, you know, this is yeah. right in the middle of our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So sort of as a um, um, remediation, yeah. the town said, we don't have to do this, but we'll put these little fledging bush, bushes up that will eventually cover that. Now, that had to be 20 years ago, honestly. So we should, I think, proceed forward. And then the character and the feelings of the neighborhood, they may not be, you know, they may say, I'm fine with that. Or if they come in and say, what's going on? We can say, well, we took them out. We're going to put something more appropriate in terms of visibility as well as what will thrive there next year. Yeah. So it may not be the same sentiments of the neighborhood when that was first voted to be put yeah. in. And I can, I, oh. uh, I, I, I'm totally in, in support. I will say that I, my thought is that uh, the optics of this is, is like really visible. We're cutting down green things. Uh, that's going to cause some distress. And, I, it, and I, while I think it's the right thing to do, I think the, if we can be on a path to fast replacement yeah. with something that the, the op, you know, it's going to be, it's one of the, it's really visible. And we're the, you know, it's one of the places where we get judged on how, uh, efficient and effective we are. Yeah. That's fair. I agree. Yes. And could I, it will take care of one of my new business since we're talking about Lachlan Ave. Um, I know we spoke earlier and one of the things I'd anticipated was with our um, vote to enforce the two hour parking on Lachlan Ave and some of the um, other side of Mass Ave, et cetera. Um, one of the things we had discussed and I know I had conversations um, informally, but I guess if we could, a, time the work, according to you and Mr. Rademacher, whether both these events should happen at the same time or if they should be staggered, as well as could you, or perhaps the chair, or both, follow up with sort of the counterparts on the school side? Because one of the things I had anticipated and the reason why the subcommittee recommended that we don't start enforcing the two-hour parking on those areas that have the signs and we voted to enforce until the third week of September was to give the administration and the principal uh, enough opportunity and time to get it out to parents in an email, to let their staff people know. And I just haven't seen any of that. Now, I'm, a, I'm on it as a coach, but I usually get that. So perhaps if the chair, with the school committee chair and, and or the town manager could just follow up just to make sure, I, I just don't want it to be at the last minute that, that notice goes out the first week of school. Um, 
unless that's what the school committee and um, the superintendent say that's how they want to do it but initially when I was discussing it with them they were saying to do it the first week of September would be sort of an onslaught even though they would mail over the summer I just haven't seen any of those so that's okay. one of my new business out of the way thank you so move thank approval of, of removal and some sort of replacement second we have a motion a second any further discussion seeing none all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. opposed thank you or nothing thank you Ms. Jacqueline um, and now uh, we come to number 13, a discussion on Nova's agenda. Um, this, I think, is a good time for, um, well, I guess I'll give a little background to everyone who might not know what Nova's agenda is. Um, you may have noticed that our past meetings, we've had very thick binders with hundreds of pages of paper, and we're now um, is talking about transitioning into an online version where we don't have to waste so much paper and um, perhaps make it our lives a little easier with a thing, a program called Novus Agenda, which um, I, I, I personally am starting to become more comfortable with it. I, it certainly is <coughs> a learning curve to it. Um, and I guess I, this is an opportunity for members of the board to, you know, say what they like, voice some concerns, um, whatever comes to mind when, um, when you think about Nova's agenda. And it's getting time to discuss a potential path forward, um, whether or not we like this and want to continue using it. Um, what, uh, personally, I would like to um, give our office and us as well um, at least one more meeting under a trial version um, before we, we do vote to make this permanent. Um, it, it's a really big change, and I, I think that, you know, day by day we're getting more accustomed to it, but I think there are some functions that we might want to check out a little more, and I think our office, it's, you know, it's the summertime and it's vacation time, and, you know, people are coming in and out, and, um, I, I think that might be a safe plan, at least give it another month under the trial and bring it back um, after having more discussions and playing around with it a little more to decide whether or not to make it permanent. Um, with that being said, I'd love to hear other thoughts from my colleagues and perhaps we'll move forward from there. Yes. I guess uh, my first question is, um, or st so I know that m m several of us have expressed opinion that it matters most what the op what Marianne and Fran and Marie say, and so I'm trusting that that's happening in a different venue and we're not doing that right now. Is that right? Yeah, we um we're ongoing discussions. Okay, all right, good. Mm -hmm. So, uh, still to me, number one is where are they and what do they think. Mm -hmm. That said, you'll get m m you know <laughs> the, uh, my thoughts. Um, one thing we have I haven't seen yet is what it looks like uh, when we have um, something that we can't share with the public, like an uh, executive session paper or you know, preparation or something like that. And so I just want to, and obviously the fallback, if this program can do that, is you actually do paper you know, for that. And that would, this to me is still enough of a win that I would be okay with that, but I'm curious on that. And number two, one of the things that I'm most excited about this whole project is having, uh, the the packet and the agenda available to everybody starting on Friday, not just us. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to, and I, we very appropriately, our trials haven't yet involved that. And I want to know that that test has happened and that it really will work when we open it. Because if we launch this and you know no one in the public can actually see any of these things, then we haven't really moved, we, we haven't gotten the wins yet. Mm -hmm. um, so those are my two, or I guess three, kind of open questions, but in terms of the functionality, it does what I need it to do and I can use it and I'm happy. Thank you. Um, Adam, do you wanna come to the microphone maybe? Uh, we don't wanna put you on the spot, but um, feel free if you know the answers to any of these um, questions we might have to uh, chime in. I'll take notes at the same time. Yes, and um, everyone at home, this is our great GIS analyst and systems administrator. Adam Perowski, who has been walking us through this uh, step by step and has done uh, quite an excellent job, and I'm very thankful for his work. 
Thank you. Uh, systems analyst. Is systems analyst, I'm sorry. But to address Dan's questions, uh, I totally agree. I think the next step is to interact this system with the new website uh, in order to show the public what, how it functions. Uh, it does take a little bit of uh, programming in order to integrate it in with the, the website, and it will have a little bit different look and feel. Uh, so I think that's definitely something we need to test out. Okay. And the confidential documents? Is like something we'll need to try. We actually haven't tried that functionality yet. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I wonder when it's time to review our executive session minutes. That's a, perhaps <laughs> well, that will be coming up. Um, thank you. Mr. Greeley. So uh, I start where uh, Dan did, which is, and I think we actually want to request. Marianne, am I correct? It's actually Fran who does most of the agenda work uh, in the office, or? It is. Uh, but with this system, I can, I can see that it's going to impact all of us because um, emails are saved right to it. Yeah. And there's, you know, there would be three of us that would get those emails. So um, to me, it's going to be a, a very interactive, uh, you know, approach right. for all of us. Perhaps it would be like friends on job more to make sure we're doing it on um, consistently right with language you know things like that which are are, are important but on um, yeah but it is friend up to yeah. this point mostly. I mean, and i know they won't like this but i i actually want to request fran marianne and if marie's health is okay be here for that meeting because i start where dan did uh, it, it was always ridiculous to me uh, for them to cut, make 14 copies and then have to sort through the notebooks. And my first goal was to make this far more time efficient. We have the least number of clerks in an office in town hall, and they do five times the work of any other office, I would, I would argue. But so I, I really want them to approve it and say yes, if, and I love them. But if you ask them, they're, I'm not sure they're saying yes yet, in my opinion. Uh, second, I'd like to congratulate both Adams for the process they put together, as you know, starting with us uh, in terms of what do we want out of a system such as this, and then seeing it come to this, this kind of fruition. Uh, I had trouble uh, getting, pulling it up today because of my technological dinosaurness, and uh, with one quick moment, Adam pulled it up for me just before this meeting. So. Uh, I love using it during the meeting. I think it's just, and before the meeting, I think it's just excellent uh, as an opportunity. And, you know, in terms of transparency, to eventually be able to imagine people at home watching the meeting and being able to look at the same documents that we look at, not just 14 copies of that binder. Uh, and, and when I started, we would get an agenda. Now, for example, this this agenda today has 178 pages to it of documents. When I, when I started, we got the agenda and then the 178 pages, not in any order at all. You had to kind of guess uh, or sort through it yourself. So we came up with first that notebook system, but I truly believe this takes us into the next uh, generation. But I want to make sure, I, my sense is right now, this is more work for our office, but I think because it's newer, but I really want them to say, yes, they believe we should go with the system, because I believe we should from my use of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grayley. Um, one thing I did speak with Adam Carosi about um, earlier, but I just want to drive home is um, the importance of technical support moving forward. Um, I know that that mainly lies on Adam's shoulders, but I would like to um, divvy it up and talk to make sure that the company's ready and willing, and um, we have the appropriate amount of staff devoted to you know making sure there are no kinks in this. And I don't want to you know make someone you know someone's job a lot harder than it already is um, to make this system work. I think I'm. Getting my, I hope I'm getting my point across there. Um, but other than that, I, I am, you know, thus far,
pretty happy with it. And I agree 100% about um, this being a decision <coughs> of the staffs. Um, and I think that we um, have had some pretty good discussions thus far on it, and we'll continue to have that. But um, and I'm just, you, you don't see an issue with pushing out the um, trial period for another meeting or so? I don't see a problem pushing it out. Uh, we had initially set some timelines and some deadlines to implement this. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them was based on the coming school year, mm -hmm. having something in place for the school committee. Um, I, I'll have to ask the company as well in order to ensure that they're not just going to cut us off midstream. Mm -hmm. um, and I can do that. I can do that tomorrow. That that would be great. I am um, because I don't think we're uh, at least I'm not ready to make a decision tonight. You know, 100% go or no go. But um, I, I would like to push it out at least one more meeting to make sure we're getting all the ins and outs and everyone's comfortable with it. Um, so, um, yes, Ms. Mahan. I'm going to sort of deviate just a little. Um, for me, um, as, as Kevin and others have stated, ha having this tablet and this information in this form here tonight works great. But in terms of doing trial, uh, selectman prep, um, the way that I do it, um, this really hinders me in the set, as well as what, what I have set up at home. And that leads into one of my other questions. Um, it's easier for me to have the paper where I put the tab and then I go look up that Mass General Law or if it's something on, you know, the MWRAs having the um, variance 15 year hearing, I go get all that other information. So it would be cumber, I, I need the paper um, to do the work, the prep that I do beforehand. Um, so how, how do we fix that? Is, is that also an option? If, if a selectman, he or she chooses that they need that, or if there's a way, I still have my concerns that we discussed at the initial meeting um, and maybe they were addressed and I missed it and I haven't seen it anywhere. In terms of uh, the uh, protection, um, if we are going through, um, coming from our home computers, which also contain other, um, you know, concerned about the keystroke issue that happened years ago, not anything to do with the town, um, and as well as, you know, my husband also uses, we have one main computer, right? I have one computer for my court reporting work that is not connected to the internet or anything like that, and I have to do that for confidentiality so that there's no way anybody can possibly, you know, takes one time, so that's just offline the whole time. And then the other computer is everybody else uses it. So for me to try to get the computer time and print out 178 pages, it has hindered me um, besides my family circumstances of late, which has nothing to do with you all. It has hindered me in terms of the prep and the way I do it. But I, I'm, you know, I'm willing to work with that. Maybe there's a feature that um, I can click on 1, 2, 13, 15. Like the common victual license, it's easier for me and it's quicker for me when I have the actual document in front of me because I'm sort of a little autistic myself. I know where everything is and I can kind of group and flip where, where here it's harder. Maybe there's a function that I don't need all 178 pages, but if I, if there, I could have the opportunity that says, you know, can you print out, I need 47 of the pages or something like that. I mean, if I only needed three or four pages, I don't mind doing it except for I'm still not comfortable with that if I use my home computer and somehow log on to the town slash school site um, that the protection's going to be there. So if you could get us follow-up material on that. The other thing, um, the other two points that I had, well, I already talked about my prep, so the, the other point that I had was, um, and this um, with the town manager and town council as well as the other Adam, if there are any guidelines to the board in the sense of I want to have all, I, I love the idea that someone sitting at home can sit there and, and read what tax said and their recommendations, what they considered and didn't. Um, just because there's a very small minority, you know, I could probably count to my left hand, um, just to give us some guidelines in terms of that information's out on Friday or whenever we deem it appropriate, Friday at five, Saturday at nine, um, that we don't fall, I wanna, the quorum issue, I wanna make sure that we're properly prepared for that um, so that 
somebody doesn't sort of backdoor their way in and then can somehow prove that three of us had a conversation or something like that. I'm overthinking it, but I'm just thinking of it in terms of, so whatever guidelines the town manager and town council could give to us on that, recognizing we follow whatever rules in, that we want to, but, um, and, and what I'm thinking of is not the average person calling me up and saying, listen, I'd be willing to give you an opinion, but sort of the pitfalls, if there's something we should really watch and be careful about, for somebody who, for whatever reason, may say, gee, I'm going to try to say I'm doing A, and then they come back with B. Yes, Mr. Real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure. So, uh, um, and I hear what you're saying, you know, I will forever, like when I go to business meetings, I take my iPad, but I still have my notebook and I still like to write. Uh, but you know, I, I still can do that with uh, with the with the system. But the making it available to the public is a two-edged sword, because there are those out there that will read all 178 pages and even perhaps check what we've redacted to see whether or not that was properly redacted. Uh, I, I guess that could happen, you know, at some point. So, but. You know, uh, transparency is a very important issue, but I agree with Diane. I think on weekends with this packet going out, of course, you know, we're saving the police having to deliver the packets, but, I, you know, Adam, is it possible to find some way that we can print these documents? So I'm at home going through the packet. Is there, uh, does this system allow me to print uh, documents uh, at my home, on my home printer? Sure. Uh, we, are, uh, in coupled with the online system that you have, where you can touch on an item and see the agenda item next to it, yeah. it also generates a PDF, which is printable. Okay. Uh, so, but you would be working inside the PDF software in order to print the select pages that you're interested in. Right. But it still takes the internet connection. It still takes downloading the document and knowing how to manipulate manipulate it yourself in order to get the print that you're looking right. for. But just one more, sorry if I'm taking too much time. Uh, I, I honestly think we should forget the voting part of this. If you remember the first night we used this, we started voting on here as well as verbally. But I do wonder with Mary Ann or, and or um, Fran afterwards, if just this agenda is taken and the votes are, are typed in afterwards, I mean, that can serve as the minutes of the meeting as well. I know comments. Uh, have to go in there also, but I, I just I don't see value to actually physically voting on here like we did all night long. The chairman calls a vote and we vote. Um, um, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. That I don't think that's a function we'll be using moving forward. At least, um, you know, if we do choose to move forward with Novus, I for the next however many months I'm chairman won't be calling votes online as well as in person. Okay. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a quick yeah, question? And please. To respond? First of all, uh, Ms. Mahan, I'd be happy to answer any specific questions and prepare any guidance as you'd like with respect to open meeting law compliance and public records compliance and the NOVA system. The second thing that I, I sort of wanted to posit to the board, and Mr. Kurowski, is whether or not um, the system is capable of, if the selectmen found it valuable of having a standard uh, selectman uh, reference uh, material that would go along with, that would basically be on the Novus, uh, not agenda, but the, the Novus software, it could just be on every meeting so that Ms. Mahan or other board members wouldn't necessarily have to um, go out outside of the system to find common reference material, in other words, maybe a list of limited policies like the uh, board's policies with respect to alcohol licenses or whatever that could just be included onto the system at all times so that for folks who I tend to agree use paper a lot because of the ability to flip back and forth between one thing and another, they would have the ability to have some set agreed upon uh, list of reference materials that if you were looking at an agenda item on a specific issue like a convict license and you wanted to see policies or the statute or the guidelines or whatever, that could be loaded onto the system, not necessarily as a meeting specific document, but as a document that's always available on Novus for them to check. I, I, I'm sure that that's probably a complicated question you have to check with the uh, folks, but do you think that's even a possibility? I think it's a possibility in that uh, you're working inside a digital document 
and you can create a link that can send you to another digital document, whether it be on the web or whether it be within, within the system or within the PDF uh, that uh, we can download through the system. So I think anything's possible. I think that's some level of customization that we would have to request from uh, the vendor, though. Okay. Thank you. Yes, please. And I'd just like to say that uh, we're not using all of the tools inside the system yet. Uh, none of our staff have been formally trained, which comes with the purchase of the software. Um, and I believe there is functionality that over time we could uh, learn to use to make things more efficient. Um, so the, the pilot's a great opportunity for us to explore this. Uh, a lot of the questions that we have are great ones that will take some customization uh, from the vendor that will occur if purchase occurs. Um, and uh, also the, the, the admin staff, I think, have done a great job learning the system, again, with only my directive in, in training and us working together in order to figure out the tools. Um, and I think they'll, with any tool that we choose, uh, over time they'll become more efficient and proficient using any one of these software packages. Thank you very much. Will you be able to get us, um, or do we have to purchase it first, but I would imagine the answer is no. Would you be able to get us the description, descriptive language of any firewall protection or anything else that comes with this, um, with the Nova system? Just not so much that I can review it, but I can also give it to my husband, um, who does work for the government, and you know, can. I don't know the different kinds of protections, and I don't even know if firewall is the right word. I'm reaching. This isn't my thing, but um, that that really is a concern in my house, not just personally slash politically, but also th who other people who use that same computer. And I, I want to make sure it's safe. And I can get you the security information related okay. to the computers that the Novus company uses. There's also safety issues directly from your uh, endpoint in your home. Right. Someone could hack into a system at, at any computer, I guess you could say. Uh, and so security is different, has, I think, different terminologies. Mm -hmm. I can get you all the information that Novus has. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I and I can I give it to my husband because he has the computer set up. There's some things we just can't do because it would open us or something like that. And mm -hmm. we just live with that. It's no big deal. So if you can get that to me and then I can get it to him and he can take a look at it. Sure. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, please, Mr. Uh, Chairman. I'll be very brief. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, j just from my perspective, um, I'm probably, I, maybe I'm not, but I think I'm probably the number one agenda item submitter. Uh, so I uh, practiced for this meeting um, going into the back end of the system and directly submitting agenda items digitally uh, to the board's office. And I, I will say that I, uh, after a quick training from Adam Kurowski, I found it to quickly be very intuitive. Uh, the staff in the town manager's office was shocked and uh, thrilled that on Friday morning they didn't have to run around making the thousands of copies that were necessary and figure out if the color printer had enough toner and what, where to put the three-hole punches and what time to get, the, uh, to get the documents down to the board of selectmen office. So uh, at least from the town manager's office uh, point of view, I think there's great benefits to be gained by moving in this direction. And I, I know in a conversation that I had with the chairman at one point, uh, for me this really this discussion sort of has two levels. There's the novice discussion, you know, do we like this product? But then there is the larger discussion of the concept. Are we going to move forward with an e-packet concept, and how do we do that? Uh, and I know, you know, uh, to Ms. Mahan's point, perhaps, um, you know, the board could adopt a policy whereby if there are certain agenda items that any board member needs printed, the office will print those and make those available to the board member um, so that they can have that access, or, or whatever the balance the board thinks is the right uh, balance to have a policy in place so that every board member can be uh, comfortable with the documents that, or you know, the the issues that they'll be voting on every other Monday. Uh, so that's all I have. I, I think it's um, I think it's moving forward. Change is tough. New processes are to be learned, but I think there's benefits to be had here. Um, one, um, <clears throat> sorry that this conversation is dragging on. It is an important one for us um, to everyone um, still with us. Um, one, one thing I think that will be important, and it's something I've spoke with um, our, our staff on, is mm -hmm. the relationship between Novus and the new website uh, mm -hmm. system. I think that's um, something that that will be very important. Going back to Dan's point about making it, you know, really um, the transparency part of this work, 
would be making sure that the two are connected um, <coughs> and they have a strong relationship. So that's something maybe when we do have finalized this discussion at potentially the next meeting, um, you might have a little insight on that. That would be very helpful. Yes, yeah, so we've started talking, if you don't mind, yeah. we've started talking about that internally and I, I think we're um, mostly in agreement that it would be appropriate to integrate Novus or any product into <coughs> the website. So you'd still be on the town's website, but you'd have access to the system. Uh, the questions still to be answered are, do we completely move away from the agenda in minutes system that the website currently provides for every committee and move to Novus? Do we just use Novus for the reference material but still provide minutes and agendas in the traditional way? And those, those are the conversations that we need to iron out before we would fully put the foot on the gas. Mm -hmm. I think um, I know between now and our next meeting might generally be a slower time with vacations, but I think this is something we kind of have to put the pedal to the metal um, to between now and the 18th. Or Sounds right. Yeah. That's when the next meeting is. Mr. Yes. Chairman, I'm sorry. May I note one other thing that I thought might be helpful for the yeah, board? Yeah, of course. Um, I just want to, the board may be well aware of this, but I just want to remind the board that if the board, for example, wanted to attend a novice training session together, that's not something that's a meeting. It's not a deliberation that the board is engaging in. As long as there's not some sort of deliberation going on and talking about matters of, of policy for the town, you could all benefit from each other's questions and perspectives as you're, you know, basically going through a training process. It's something to consider while you're examining not only Novus, but any other uh, technology software. Thank you, Doug. Okay, do we have any other comments on Novus for tonight? Seeing none. Good. Okay, so we will um, continue using Novus and extending the um, trial pending Novus's response to Adam Kurowski. Um, finally, um, thank you everyone, and we're now on to correspondence received. Do we, we receive? Oh, sorry. Um, um, we have the loan approved for 39 Academy Street window replacement from uh, Mr. Warden, and we also have the daytime parking need which we heard from Ms. Phelan earlier. Um, move receipt, sorry. Move receipt, and would we? we and move, it, if I may amend, and refer mm -hmm. the daytime parking need to the parking subcommittee yes. for report back. That would be great. Do we have a second? Second. We have That's a- That's your motion, I second, yeah. Okay. Motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? or nothing vote. Okay, new business. Mr. Sullivan. No new business. No new business. Doug? None, thank you. Adam? No new business. Mr. Greeley? No new business. Ms. Mahan? Um, try to do this quick. First night of Pop Water Football and Cheerleading down at the high school, every night Monday through Thursday, month of August, and then games and competitions start in September. Uh, the second point it talked about earlier, um, but just to give the board an update, um, the town manager and I have had conversations regarding um, Sunnyside Ave and the four or five sort of major outstanding requests that they have down there. Um, Recontacted who I needed to contact. Um, Tony, I'm going to say his last name wrong, but the manager has his contact info as does the selectman's office. Tony Barletta, who replaced Dan Hunt, has promised that um, that uh, DCR did agree in terms of they exacerbated the condition of the road, that they would repair it when we went in, Mr. Grayley, myself, and the town manager and others on the microburst. That was another thing that was discussed, and the then commissioner agreed that they, I said, you know, would love a new road. We're not asking that. We're asking the large potholes that you made massive, and they agreed to address them. The holdup has been with Dan Hunt running for successfully state rep, but now Tony's on board, Tony Barletta. Um, everything supposedly was set to go, but then the way it was explained to the town manager and myself was when they got out there, the original fix they had decided upon, which is something like hot topping or hot boxing or something like that, wasn't adequate enough. So what they had to do and what they promised would happen by the end of July, um, and I did not make the call today, and I think if the manager <coughs> might do this tomorrow, um, that the engineers were going to go out from DCR, look at it, um, he, Tony stressed that please do not say that DCR is going to give them a brand new road, um, but short of what they were proposing, so 
DCR did not promise that, but they did promise that, as well as the um, concerns that the neighbors had in terms of accessibility that DCR promised to put in there. One of the neighbors made their own ramp. DCR, I understand, took it down because they had to in terms of liability. But, you know, you really can't get on that if you're even a bicyclist unless, you, you know, you go down seven, eight blocks. So I just wanted to give the board an up update on that and that the manager and I will again start beating the drum to say, okay, you said end of July. In terms of the road, in terms of the pedestrian and anybody else access, as well as there was a handicap, another ramp, a handicap access. And then the last thing was, you know, the necessary maintenance that they promised they would do down there, but that sort of has fallen to the bottom. And then my last piece of new business is, I just want to congratulate one of our town meeting members, as well as a member of the Park and Rec Commission, Jim Robillard. He has been chosen unanimously to be entered into the Babe Ruth um, National Ho Coaches Hall of Fame. He will be the 12th Babe Ruth coach, I believe that's the number they told me, 12th in the state of Massachusetts. Um, it was a unanimous vote, which sometimes these things aren't. Um, but he's very well known. I was having a conversation with the chair and I've yet to bump into somebody that didn't you know, play for him or something like that. So um, th that will be in August. I'll be sure that the Clarkman's office gets the information. I think it'll be at the Cafe Escadrille, which is where they're planning it with one or two other um, awards that they're giving out. So congratulations to Jim. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, Absolutely. Yeah, Mr. Oblard was a great coach. Um, we, we spent many summers uh, together for the Arlington Pond Rats, which I believe he still coaches to this day. Um, and we always were happy to beat our rival, this is the Arlington Cardinals, which they were the lesser of the two teams, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Dunn. No new business. Um, I do have uh, two pieces of new business. One, um, back to, I guess it's a the theme of um, our summer meetings today. Um, I think it's important for us to extend our best wishes to the Arlington's uh, National Under-12 All-Star Team as they head off to Florida this week to play in the uh, Cal Ripken's World Series. So essentially like the Little League World Series. And uh, it, it, this is really an awesome, awesome accomplishment for them. Um, and I'm sure they are incredibly excited and they've already represented us so well and I'm sure they will continue to. Um, we're very proud of them and from the board I think I can speak for all of us and say we wish them the best of luck and we hope that they uh, come home with the trophy but if not let them know that we're uh, very proud of them anyway. Um, and I am gonna just uh, list the players names out because this is such a um, such an accomplishment. Um, there, the players are Jacob Ahern, Ryan Boyle, Caden Fitzpatrick, Brendan Flynn, Spencer Friedman, David Guidas, John Horican, Brendan Jones, Patrick Massey, Timothy Mazay, Anthony Mazzori, James Santagati, Timothy Shaw, Sam Theodore, and Jonathan Zach. And uh, we hope that they have so much fun uh, this week down in Florida. And I do have um, one new, one other piece of new business, and uh, if you'll let me indulge for a second. This, um, this Saturday I was down at the finish line for the Pan Mass Challenge, and um, my brother and my uncle wrote it together. And it's um, my uncle who actually at one point worked for the Arlington Rec Department, um, recently found out he had lung cancer and is currently going through chemotherapy. And um, while he is in chemotherapy, you can imagine how ill he's feeling, he still found the time to train, ride, and complete the Pan Mass Challenge. So I um, need to say I'm a very proud nephew and brother. And um, John Henry did a uh, great job supporting him, and it was a uh, great day for our family. So thank you, everyone. Um, Move to adjourn. Uh, just, but, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Kiro is hiking the Appalachian Trail or something? Uh, yes, he has uh, been hiking with his family the last few weekends, so I'm okay. sorry he couldn't join us. And, uh, just wanted people to be aware of that. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Second the motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 4 nothing vote.